Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. He's worthy to be praised today, church. We showed up for that. Lord, help us, Jesus. Brother Leroy was right on track. Said some good things. I'm going to help you real quick. Those are my, my two favorite things to say. I went back and listened to a bunch of preaching. I listen to a lot of preaching. Uh, mine and a lot of everybody else's, and I realize that's two of my favorite statements, is I'm going to help you real quick. Uh, it ain't always real quick, but it is always some good help because it comes from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, but he had said something that struck a chord in me about feeling. And Brother Don was moving in the Holy Ghost a minute ago. I hope some of y'all woke up whenever he started to do that. I, I think we need to get back to paying attention. Lots of variables and lots of things I can use, analogies and all that. And I use baseball a lot of time. A lot of people love baseball and all that. But there ain't nothing worse than being on a team with somebody who ain't paying attention. That, in every walk, it don't matter where you are. I, I was on a job one time, a guy was working for me, and I heard the rigor tell him more than three times, don't put your hand there. Don't put your hand there. Well, guess what? He put his hand there, and that pipe comes sliding in there, and then his hand got caught in between another piece of pipe. And he, in retrospect, months later, after he hauling around, he lost his job over. When we don't pay attention to what's going on, not only in the spirit, but in the world around us, we end up with a lot more bumps and bruises than we call uh, that we should have had in the first place. All right, all right. But spiritually, it is not the time. It's not the time to not pay attention. Spiritually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. We'll get on it. That's all right. If you want to stand for the reading of the word, if you have your Bibles, you. Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven." 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I'm reading all this scripture. I hope you're catching what I'm putting down, though. It says that we've been given the Spirit so that we can know the things of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Last scripture, John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Right. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask you to anoint me today, Lord. Anoint our ears to hear, Lord. Anoint our hearts to be doers. 
Lord, we ask you today, Lord Jesus, to transform us, Lord, into something that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I am reminded of something that I've said more than once in my own life, that feelings are not facts. Feelings are not facts. How you feel is not always the truth. Yeah. A lot of people who lived a little while, they, they know that to be true. Some of you young people probably think that you feel, how you feel is, is facts, but it ain't. I wish, sometimes I wish it was, but it ain't. Right. Feelings are not facts. I say that to remind myself. That's preaching to me. That's not really preaching to you, but I want to remind myself that sometimes... When God speaks to me and through me, it's not how I feel it's going to come out or how I feel it's going to be. God still keeps us on our toes because I feel like a lot of us have settled back into how we feel when we come into the house of God. I'm already preaching, but I ain't preaching just yet. But How we feel and where you sit and everything that's going on and what your membership status and what position you hold in here and how you feel about it are not facts. And they are not a stamp of approval, nor are they a stamp of authority. You only have those things through Jesus Christ. All right. For the next little while, I'll, I'll try to preach to you on the subject, Apocalypse Now, Spiritual Revelation. Spiritual Revelation. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands real quick, Lord. God's moving in this place right now. Whether we feel it or not, whether you got the goosebumps or not, Jesus Christ has ordained this service for a reason. Right now, Lord Jesus, Lord, our minds are on you, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Lord, move in our lives today, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. I read something profound which probably will forever change the way I preach and speak earlier this week. It's something that a, a, a good preacher that I admire very much says that he reads before every sermon. And I read it earlier before this sermon, and, and, and it, it'll change kind of how you see people and how you see the move of God in your own life. And, and I'm not selling it, so you ain't got to buy it. But, but a lot of times I love the Word of God so much that if I'm not careful, I'll dig into it like David loves it. And you may not be looking at it the same way. So I have to be careful. But in order to not be myself, I can't abandon all of who I am. So therefore, I'm going to teach you just a little bit at the beginning. The word apocalypse comes from the Greek word apocalypso, which means revelation. In fact, revelation is the, the, it's the beginning or the root word of where we get apocalypse from. But if you look up the definition of apocalypse, a lot of us are going to get the same definition nowadays. The way we use apocalypse is the end of all things. Right. You can watch the movies and the shows. You can read books about how the end is, is coming. And if, if you're one of those people that likes, um, you know, zombies or whatever. I don't know if there's a lot of zombie people in the house. This is a... Yeah, they're in the Bible, in case y'all were wondering. There's zombies in the Bible. That's another Bible lesson for another time. Uh, I can prove it. I can prove it. So, but if you like those types of things, if that's something you've ever been lifted, then you'll watch something that has either the word apocalypse in it. And over time, we've taken the word apocalypse to mean the end of all things and, 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 and to be done with. But it didn't start out that way. It didn't start out as being the word the apocalypse, so it came down to something that was to be uncovered and revealed, or revelation. Right. The Bible says that John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and then revelation. Right. The book of John, the revelation of John. Everybody understand where I'm at? It's the last book of your Bible, in case y'all ain't read it in a while. If you flip to the back, and then flip back a little ways, if you got a good Bible, you got a dictionary there, then flip back. It's the last book of the Bible, right. revelation. To be revealed, to uncover. And the problem is, is that a lot of us have looked at Revelation and the Greek word apocalypso, and we've gotten to the point where we just end up with apocalypse, and then that's it. 
The end of the world. No one wants to hear about Revelation. I didn't read to y'all nothing about Revelation because I knew if I started reading the scriptures, some of y'all are going to check out on me. Some of y'all are deathly afraid of that air apocalypse. Y'all done watched Left Behind so many times. Oh, Kirk Cameron scares y'all. Y'all see a poster of him? Y'all don't even want to go to church no more. Start talking about the end. Now, we miss out on a lot of that good preaching that used to come out of Revelation because some of us, we're not scared of nothing, including the Lord. Make sure this one's still on. We're not scared of nothing. We've gotten to where we're desensitized. We're, 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 we're okay the way we are. This is why feelings aren't facts. This is why we need spiritual revelation in our lives. The first set of scriptures I read to you was about Peter. But at the same time, I want you to understand something. Something God gave me out of it. It said, Simon, Simon Peter, who do you say that I am? And Simon said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, you got to really dig into the word and actually the, the way I read it. No, maybe not the way you read it. Maybe you just read it like read through like you're reading a catalog. I would suggest that you don't do that uh, because you'll miss out on a lot of good nuggets. But the way that I read it was in the beginning, Jesus said, who do people say that the son of man is? He didn't even give them a hint. He didn't give him, uh, he didn't try to, to prop him up. Y'all know how y'all are a lot of times, especially when you're in a relationship in the beginning and, and you like, do you like me? You know, oh, yeah. You know, are, are you, especially women, y'all try to lead the man into that conversation, you know, knowing good and well, he's trying to wrangle out of that conversation. And, and, and you're trying to get him to say that Jesus didn't try to prop nobody up to get him. He wasn't trying to hint. He didn't wink his eye at him whenever he said, who do, who do men say that I am? You know, Christ, Christ. He didn't do any of those things. He actually said, who do men say that the son of man, me, just this guy in front of you, who do they say that I am? And, and Simon responds with, with something that we all have to respond with in our life. Either Jesus Christ is a fictional character in a book that you read sometimes, or he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He's either God manifest in the flesh, or he's just Iron Man. All right. Well, I'm in the right church. We were reading our Bibles right here. Some of y'all are like, Iron Man, yeah. No. no. Either Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and the Bible says he is, or he's not. And a lot of us struggle, and a part of our struggle is, is that we still haven't really truly answered, who do men say that I am? And then whenever he asks you, who do you say that I am? Peter is the only one that stands up, and I love the fact that it's Peter. You know, if it had been anybody else, a lot of us would struggle with Christianity. If it would have been John, the beloved, or any of those other guys, whatever, you know, the ones that didn't deny Christ, you know, the ones that didn't have a temper problem, the ones that didn't run back to what they used to do as soon as Jesus left the situation, like, like Peter did. As soon as Jesus was gone, he went a fishing. Huh? As soon as he got a chance, he'd take his clothes off. As, as soon as, as, as someone put the pressure on him to ask him, if, or you're one of them, he just denied Christ. But in that moment, th th this is why it gives me such great hope, is that even when I fall off, I can go back to the question and say, David, who is Jesus to me? Well, he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He's the one who set me free. The one who came so that I could be delivered. And then the Bible says that, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Now, I love to shout, and I love to preach hard, and I love all that good stuff. But I'm going to help you real quick. All right? Teaching... It's necessity. It's part of the five-fold ministry. Right. Right? right? You can bring all the prophets, all the evangelists, and all the pastors in here that you want, but if we can't teach people, then some people ain't never going to learn. It's Most of y'all will relegate eight hours a day to your children, and when you're in school, you'll go eight hours a day and sit there and listen to a teacher, and then when the test comes, you'll be able to recite everything that they gave you, but you come and you give Jesus Christ an hour and a half on Sunday, and then when Monday comes around, I have to ask you, who do men say that he is? And the problem is, is it said that flesh and blood, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to chip away at what I just said. Flesh and blood did not, did not reveal this to you, 
But my Father, God, the Spirit, He showed you this. And this is the great falling away of the American church. It's where we are Christians in name, but yet we don't have spiritual revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And I can prove it because as soon as the storm comes, like he talked about earlier, Jesus couldn't walk on our boat if, if we had a flashlight and a, and a bridge to help him get over there. We have no spiritual revelation of who Jesus Christ is. I can teach you all day who Christ is. And teaching is good. You have to have it. It's part of the fivefold ministry. But, but you don't have spiritual revelation. Then it doesn't matter what I tell you. You can recite it. When I was younger, they used to teach us Acts 2.38. In fact, for the longest time, it was the only scripture. Now, if you grew up in another denomination, then you probably learned John 3.16. And that probably was the biggest scripture in your life. But whenever I grew up in the Pentecostal church, it was Acts 2.38. In fact, it didn't matter how old you was. They could rattle that off. Huh? And then the next one behind that might have been, Hero is with the Lord our God is one Lord. Huh? Because we are one God, one baptism people. Right? Oh, maybe I'm, maybe I am, maybe, maybe not you. I get an amen on that part. Amen. I got one on, I got one on the second row. Thank God. Huh? And we, we learn these things. But whenever I was eight or nine years old, did I really understand that what Peter had told us to do? It wasn't until I was nine years old. And around October-ish, with my eyes squinted real, real close, and a man praying for me after service. And I remember because he had a lot of keys, like he was a janitor. There was a lot of keys right here. I don't I just remember. The, I remember my eyes. I was, I was squinting so hard. I was trying to close my eyes so hard that the Holy Ghost would come on me. I don't know if you ever done that. You know, you're like, oh, Lord, get all that. You're trying to squeeze all the humanity out of me. All this, I, I, I didn't repent it, but I was like, oh, Jesus, you know, come on, help me out. And I just remember seeing the keys and hearing them keys. It's just jingling back and forth. I mean, there's a lot of keys. Like, he was in charge of a big building or something. I don't remember. But it wasn't until then when the Holy Ghost came upon me and I started to speak in other tongues that all of a sudden Acts 2.38 started to mean something to me. And it was a spiritual revelation of who Christ really was and what he had done. And it wasn't until after I started to read and then I had to have a prayer life in order for God to come on me. And look, I, I know. You're like, what in the world does this have to do with the apocalypse now? Let me help you real quick. All right? You need to have an apocalypse in your life over unbelief. Yeah. It needs to die now. Yeah. You need to have a, a, a world ending. Your, if your worldview is tainted, if you feel like you don't see things like you know you're supposed to, or you call yourself a Christian, but yet you live in an unovercoming, I don't even know if there's a word, but unovercoming life, non-overcoming. If you live where every day you wake up, you don't know whether or not you're going to make it. Sometimes we're there. I'm not, I'm not downing you. I'm not calling you out. But sometimes we wake up and we're like, man, yesterday I was Jesus folk, and today I feel like just folk. Like I'm just, I'm just here. I don't know what to do. Like I know yesterday I was laying hands on people and we were praying in church, but today I feel like I can't even put my pants on right. Am I the only one that's ever gone through something in the house? I, uh, I got one in the back. She's backing me up. There you go. And all of a sudden, we don't live an overcoming life. And we'll start blaming stuff. I'm not used in the church house. I'm not this and I'm not that. If they just pat me on the back a little bit longer, maybe I'd, I'd do something. I don't know. Huh. We do. We'll blame others, we'll look at others, but yet we have no spiritual revelation about who we are in Christ. Paul. Everybody wants to be Paul. But don't everybody want to be Paul? You know? Paul, Paul had such a revelation of Jesus Christ that after he had his episode on Damascus Road, that it would, he was only with the disciples in Damascus a few days, and then he was found preaching Jesus Christ. And later on he said that I had the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it came to me by the Spirit. How is it that we are so learned in America and we are so learned in the church house sometimes that you can quote your favorite scripture, but yet we have no power. We have no power to overcome. We have no power to move forward. You know, we're in the, the more series. We never stop doing that. I'm trying to help you today to live a more overcoming life and to have more. And I think that I'm, I'm a, what I am attacking today is not only the spirit of religion, but it's the 
I'm here. Jesus ought to get used to it. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. It's that he's here. Transform me into who I'm supposed to be so that I can get used to being an overcomer. Some of us have not overcome in so long that we have to make up excuses. We'll quit church and go somewhere else. We will. We'll quit church and go somewhere else. Or we'll leave church and go listen to somebody else. You call somebody your pastor, but yet they can't pastor you. There ain't no point in even calling this your church if the pastor can't pastor you. I'll help you real quick. If it ain't my sheep and my, uh, and my pastor, he need to get in his right sheep and his right pastor. He need to get on down the road. Well, this is speaking how we really want to talk. If it ain't my toys in the toy box, he need to get out. Right? When I was a kid, every toy in my toy box was mine. Every one of them in there was mine. And then the ones my brother had, those are mine too. Huh? That's how that worked, right? Huh? But we need to have a revelation of not only who Jesus Christ is, but who you are. The reason why we, we're walking around, and, look, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come at you hard, but at the same time, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you get out of the ditch that you think that you're in. Okay? You're not who they say you are. You're either Christ. This is why we go down in Jesus' name. This is why baptism, the Bible says, is essential. Ooh, I have one. I got one right there. I got one backing me up. Either it's essential or it's not. Here's the problem. We don't study to show ourselves approved. We don't read the word of God. And then when we do read the word of God, you, you know what the biggest question is a lot of times is how come there's so many denominations? How can so many people believe different things out of one book? Oh, I'm coming for you now. How is it that we run our lives the way we run our lives? And we pick our favorite scriptures and we deny the ones that are not our favorites. I, and, and, and look, some of y'all looking at me like that ain't what I do. I'm going to tell you right now. If you ever try to do anything for God and you don't have the spiritual re uh, revelation of who he is, then everything you touch will fall apart. Anytime that you try to elevate yourself in power, and Jesus Christ is not the power that you seek, you will fall. You will fall. I'm telling you right now, they'll shine you on this week. They'll pat you on the back this week. But sooner or later, you're going to fall. It didn't matter how, much, how many times they stand Dagon back up. When in the presence of the Lord, it's going to fall. Anything lifted above Christ in this world will fall at his feet. And look, I... Spiritual revelation has to happen in order for us to be spiritually equipped for the day that we live in. Child, there's aliens out there. Some of y'all watch the news and some of y'all don't. They say there's aliens out there. And some people are so fascinated about what's out there, but yet they still living in the same place, doing the same things, having the same little old baby meals, living underneath their privilege as Christians, but yet anything that will glit and glamour and you can look at all of a sudden, that that's what you want to focus on. All right. well, the election's coming soon. It won't be long. Then y'all all be focused on whether you're Republican or Democrat or independent, in other words, a loser, however you want to look at it. None of them never make it. I'm sorry. Let's just be honest about who we are. You come in here, you give God an hour and a half of your time on Sunday morning. Hope to God you come back tonight. There's an evangelist. You better come back tonight. You're going to hear something different. You know what I learned, though? We have some of the best preaching that comes out of this place. I believe it. I amen my pastor like I can't amen him. I'm telling you right now, it makes a difference. It makes a difference when you amen your pastor. When you amen the I got told this. We went somewhere and visit. I ain't going to say where. But we went somewhere and visit. And I amen the fire at him because he was preaching good. And he told me after. He said, man. He said, I felt it. I, I was what you mean? That's his church. They love him. But we find a lot of times we don't amen the, the preach word of God. It's because we don't have a spiritual revelation about what's going on. You came, if you came here to be entertained, I'm sorry. I did not come to entertain you. I'm, 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 I know I think I'm that funny, but I ain't that funny. 
I know that I think that I'm that good, but I ain't that good. You, you know, I'm just going to be honest about who I really am. I am nothing without Christ. And, and with that revelation, this is why whenever people elevate me, I don't get the big head. Or I don't let it affect me so much that I down myself. There ain't nothing worse than a Christian who will milly mouth themselves because they think that's being humble. How can you be an overcomer and humble at the same time? I'm glad you asked. The reason that we are humble is because we understand that all good things come from God, not from David. And when you realize that all good things come from God and not me, then I'm humble. The fact that I'm even in the middle of a good time or a good moment that I'm blessed and highly favored. And so in that moment when I'm an overcomer and I'm lifted up and they say, oh, Dave, you did a good job. Pat me on the back. Woo, woo, all that good stuff. I can turn around and say, Lord, I give you glory. I thank you, Lord, for using me. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today. God, strike me down if I ever leave here and pat myself on the back and said that, oh, man, they just all clapped because I was good. Good, God Almighty. Some of you won't clap so bad. Just call me up. I'll put the phone down and I'll clap. For a low price of five dollars every call, I gotta make money somehow, guys. I gotta, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to sow into the kingdom. I gotta be able to get that money to somebody else. We're, 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 we are oversaturated with the teach word of God, and we are dehydrated with spiritual revelation. Dehydrated. We were talking about it in, in the office today. The reason why people get knocked out. I'm, I'm gonna use it in my sermon. The reason why people get knocked out is because they dehydrated. When you're fighting, them guys over there get all dehydrated and make weight. And, and your brain is in fluid in your brain. And that's the first place, I learned this from Donovan Snyder today. The first place that you get dehydrated is the fluid on your brain. And the reason you get knocked out is your brain smashing against the side of the skull. So if you're dehydrated, let's just do a, a study real quick. Let's just walk down a little bit of thinking. I'm dehydrated and I fall down and I hit my head any other normal time when I was hydrated to the fullest or like we talked about if, if you're big like some of us are big and you hit your head nothing really you just get a hurt head but if you're dehydrated you get knocked out huh I'm gonna help you there then how is it that sometimes we are so we are so in tune with the preach word of God but yet we leave here and we struggle in our day-to-day -day lives You know, if you didn't have no struggles, you wouldn't even have to talk to Jesus. I know that ain't the right, I know that ain't the right way to say it. But, but some of us, the fact that we even have struggles, the only reason we even make it in today. The only reason some of y'all are under the sound of my voice right now is because you're struggling. Huh? You're struggling. We have the revelation that Jesus Christ can heal us. He can set us free. He can deliver us. He can bless us. He can not only bless my finances, but he can bless my family. He can bless everything that I do. But do we really believe it? All right, come on. And how we tell is how we act. Yeah. I'm going to help you real quick. If you think and or you know that you're going to win a game, the trash talk is unbelievable. Oh, I'm not talking about just people who are confident. Even the ones who ain't real confident. Will run that mouth. Huh? Y'all ever play with somebody who knows they're going to win? That's like, you play like pickup basketball and all of a sudden everybody just starts, oh, I want this guy, I want that. Next thing you know, you're looking around and all the tall guys is on one team. Huh? All of a sudden the trash talk just starts to flow, right? It ain't even started yet. We trash talking over Gatorade. Because you know you're going to win. When you're confident, you're going to win. How do I know whether or not you're a Christian? Well, whether or not you're talking about Jesus and how much he made you an overcomer. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing worse than somebody who says they something. And then every time you talk to them, all they can do is milly mouth the pastor, milly mouth their life, milly mouth. They might as well just come out and say you don't like Jesus. All right. All right. I'm sorry, but it, I, God's working on me. David, am I, or am I really who, who you say that I am? You get up there and you preach every week. You go and tell all these uh, uh, addicted people that God can bring them out of addiction because they did it for you. But do you really believe that? Are you really going to put your money, your effort, and your belief where your mouth is? You know, when Jesus said, go to Jerusalem, 
I'm going to send back the spirit to comfort her. I'm going to do you with power, you know, the Holy Ghost and fire and all that good stuff. The Bible said that he was seen among over 500 people, but yet there's only 120 in the upper room. Huh? Only 120 were, were, were spiritually uh, revealed unto them who they were really going to do. Revelation will change you. When you are, when it's revealed unto you who Jesus really is, whenever the revelation, this is why a lot of us read Revelation, the only, you know the reason why you get scared and you don't like it? Because you ain't right with God. And if you're worried about your kinfolk, then you need to be what he told you to be anyway. He said, go and receive the power because you're going to be witnesses. We were supposed to be witnesses before you're anything else. Before you ever learn about the, the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, I know we covet them gift. Everybody want to walk around telling everybody about their business. You got $25 in your purse right now. Huh? Oh, we love that. Huh? Tell me what color my mailbox is. I love it. I love that stuff. I love it when God really comes through like that. I'm going to tell you right now, before you ever get there, you're supposed to be a witness of who he really is. The revelation of who God is. The mighty God in Christ. That's who we're supposed to know. How do we live an overcoming life? How do you have more in your life? You need to get rid of the stuff that you claim is Christianity and pick up what the Bible says it is. You know what's funny? Is that there are some people right now leading great moves of God in other countries. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're so fettered down with the internet and everything that they say it's supposed to be here. That it's unreal. It takes a real good prayer meeting, a fight, and a fast a lot of times just to get a good preach word of God. Huh? God got to wake me up 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and bust me in the head just so I can get out through some stuff because we can't get away from all the junk that we say it is even though it's not. Some of the greatest revivals and moves of God happen when there's no electricity. How sad is it with all the creature comforts where we can accommodate people and be inviting that we invite nobody. You know... I just want to say stuff sometimes, and, I, and when I'm preaching, I preach to me first, you second, and then I go back and I hear it again. So I get it twice. Y'all only get it once, unless you're smart. Maybe you'll go back and listen to it a second time. But there's nothing worse in my own life than someone saying that I believe Jesus and all that Jesus is, but yet I tell not one soul all week long. And then we come in here. Let me help you. You know what spiritual revelation will bring you to? It will make you buy a building when you have no people to fill it. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you need to get behind your pastor. If you call him your pastor, if you're not behind him. Sorry, pastor. He don't like that kind of preaching. The truth of the matter is, though, we say that we are like Christ, but yet we do no things like Christ. We say we want to be apostolic or we want to be the apostles doctrine. But I'm talking to me right now. I'm not talking just to you. We say that you're a preacher, but how many people do we reach a week? All right. You know why we don't do it? We have no spiritual revelation. We'd make t-shirts if we could afford it. Pass it out to every one of y'all. You could say, I go to Christian Life Church. Well, who cares? In the grand scheme of things, when you get to heaven, there's not a Christian life church section. And it'd be busted if it was. Y'all know it'd be crazy over there. It'd be wild in heaven if we got to have our own section. Huh? We know for sure it's going to be some folks over there, some crazy folks. Right? You know why? Because we champion people around here. That's the spirit of this church. No matter how busted, no matter how crazy you are, no matter where you come from, because you know why? Because we have the revelation that the Spirit has given us uh, that all flesh can be healed, all flesh can be saved. That when he said that in the end time, in the last day, that he was going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. You know what the Bible says in the last days a couple of different times? It says in the last days that people are going to be lovers of themselves. And that their love is going to wax cold. And we, we, we look at that stuff and you look around, you watch the internet, you watch the news and all this other stuff. You know how messed up this world is? Is that they told everybody that there was aliens and nobody said nothing. I mean, that's just another thing. Well, you know, whatever, yeah. It don't even matter now. They got Scientologists and all kind of crazy stuff out there. And 
We just, we're, we're, we're conditioned. You know what's going to help you shake out of that and see the revival that God promised? Huh? You got to get in tune with what Jesus Christ is trying to tell you right now. You got to download the message. You got to say, this is the word of God. I need to download it. I need to put it in my heart that I might not sin against him. And while the Bible is fresh on my mind, Lord, touch me today. Touch my mind today. Lord, use your spirit to teach me. Uh, I done wasted all my time. I didn't even get to that one. That's all right. John 4 says, this is the first time I've ever seen it. We, we quote this all the time. Ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God's going to do for them that love him. And I've quoted that, and I've heard that, and then I read that next scripture, and it blew my mind. Because I'm not going to lie, the way I heard it when I was younger, and maybe I just heard it and I, I interpreted it that way, was that it was some kind of mystery out there. And the reason why we served God or we went after God is because there was a mystery, but it was good. It was going to be a good end. You know, you don't really know. That's what faith is, right? It's where you just kind of really don't know. And, and you're like, you know what? I, I got faith, but I really don't know what's going to happen. And that makes you feel good because you got faith. This, uh, I'm going to help you. The reason why a lot of people in the world don't like the type of Christianity that some people have is because they have this faith, but they have no idea or no way to even explain it. And because they cannot explain their relationship with the being that they cannot see, that created all things, they cannot. You know why they can't explain it? It's because they've heard the preach the word of God, but they don't study the word of God, so they can't even tell them who God is. And we're trying to reach a dying world, and we have pity on them, and we talk bad about their lifestyles, and we talk bad about what they believe, and we down them, and we secretly gossip about them, which is a sin, and we talk bad about the ones in our family who don't believe like we believe, and all of a sudden, here we are doing all these different things, but we can't even explain what faith is. We can't believe, we can't even tell, and I, it just blows my mind, and I, I guess I just follow God all this time, and say, Lord... An ear have not heard. In other words, and nobody can touch it, and nobody can tell me what it is. But God's got it, so it must be really good. All right. And I'm just going to learn. I'm, one day, I'm just going. It's just going to show up on me. That's not what the Bible says. Yeah. The Bible said, "But the Spirit told us." You're telling me that it isn't in my pastor. It isn't in Sister Linda. It isn't in, it's not even written down somewhere. And thank God for the people who move in the office of prophet. But even them, they don't know all of it from my own life. But if I'm in the spirit, if I lean on the spirit, it says, but the spirit tells us that this is what it is. In other words, I don't, you know what's so funny is, is if we, if preachers are failure. So many people don't go to church because they love this one guy who was exciting and he was all the things that we, charismatic and all that. Y'all like Jesse DePlantis? Jesse DePlantis is funny. I wouldn't follow nothing he has to preach about, but he's funny. He make me laugh. You know, when we used to go stay out of town on Sunday morning, if you stay in a hotel, you turn on, especially on the east side of the state, Jesse DePlantis is going to be on there telling funny stories and all that. And I, that's funny. I like that. That's good. I like it. But he can't tell me about the good things that's going to happen in my life. Nobody can. You know why? Because if it's filtered through a man for some things, it'll never come to pass because I'll tear it down because it came through flesh. And I read you all them scriptures in Corinthians that only the spiritual can judge the spiritual. This is why a lot of you need to watch out who you tell your friends about the spiritual encounter you got in your life. Or what you feel like God, because some of y'all are going to get discouraged because you told a heathen about something that was godly. And they judged it, and you took it as godly. That's what the Word says. It said that the Spirit, this is why you should have spiritual counsel. This is why you ought to go to your pastor before you run to everybody else. I'm not advocating for you to go and bother Brother Donnie. He's up here all the time already. What I'm telling you is that if it's important, if it's really important, then you know where I go to? I go to the spiritual head, which would be my pastor in this situation, I go to him and be like, Brother Don, Lord, I'm telling you right now, I got this issue going on, and I feel like God said. And you know what Brother Don will do? Since he prays every day, speaks in tongues every day, and he lies on the spiritual for everything in his own life, I can go to him and trust his word that when he says, well, let me go ahead and search it out in the spirit, and when we come back together, if he says, hey, this is what I think that means, you know what I do? I receive it. 
Why? Because it don't come from the natural. It don't come. I'm going to tell you right now, some of you, and I don't know why I'm saying this, but you need to stop listening to people who are so carnal, so carnal, so carnal. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Some of y'all need to read Romans 8, the whole thing, at least five times. Huh? And then come back and tell me about it. Write a book report. So I'm telling you right now, you follow people who are so carnal during the week because they pet the same sins you got in your own life. But yet you come in and you want some kind of spiritual revelation. You're going to leave here every church service disgusted with your own life because you're not willing to allow Jesus Christ to transform you by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Spiritually. How about that? Because the Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You get two. If you're carnally minded, you only get one. You know what's funny? I'm coming to a close. I don't, I don't ate up all my time. What's funny is, is that we think when the Bible says that to be carnally minded is death, you think that the same reason the way the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And you're like, you know what, but death, I'm only 35, I'm only 42, I'm only 50, but I feel good. I'm only 68, and I'm delusional. You know, whatever it is you tell yourself, right? So I got all this time. But you know what that death really is? It's got nothing to do with this old body. To be carnally minded is death, which means that every time you touch something that God could have intended for good for you, that your mind will tear it apart limb by limb until you're left with nothing. Aren't you tired of being spiritually bankrupt? Aren't you tired of being spiritually broke down? How many times can I tell you that you're an awesome person or that you're this or that? Or we can call you head usher. We can call you head uh, whatever. I don't know. We got stuff we do around here. You could be head parking lot attendant and we don't ever park no cars. You could go out there and turn all the rocks over, and I can praise you. We can get up and do a 30-minute exhort about how great of a Christian you are. But you know what? When you go at home at night and you lay in your bed, that don't do you nothing. It don't buy you nothing. It don't pay your bills. And you know what it don't? It don't help your kids get off drugs. It don't help you say the right things at the right time. The Bible says that don't study what you say, that the Spirit will give you the words to say in a horrible or an important situation. To have the spirit on the inside of you is the only way to combat this world and everything in it. Oh, I thought I was in a spirit-filled church. Let me help you. I'm done. Stand to your feet. I find that the Holy Ghost, I'm going to blame it on the Holy Ghost. Blame it on something find that the Holy Ghost impresses upon me sometimes to be rougher with my voice than I intend to be. And I know that sounds like a cop out, but li listen to me. What I am deathly afraid of in my own life is that I'll be too easy on me to the point that I'll allow a root of bitterness or a root of, of evil or a root sin, something to take hold of me. That will slowly but surely rob me of my existence and my ending. I'm, you're like, oh, you're a pastor. You're a devil. Y'all probably look down on me different than brother pastor over here. Your assistant pastor. I'm going to tell you right now. Anything that I accrue in this life. Anything that me and pastor ever do in the spirit is the spirit. It's the spirit. We, we just broke down meat, meat pockets. That's it. We're just some men. That's it. We're just, just some guys who are willing to yield to the Spirit. If you look at us any kind of way, like we're better or whatever, God will help you. Help you, Lord. But the only reason that we get to where we are is because we're, we were dumb enough to take God at his word, if I can say it that way. We were foolish enough to preach the gospel because that's what we downloaded when we read the Bible. We were foolish enough to whenever God said it, we believed it. And when we got into the middle of our situation, it happened. Amen. 
and it works every time. When you have the revelation that you need that comes from the Spirit, there's nothing that will stop you in your walk or in the carnal things of life, your job, your family, anything you try to be. You want to run for office. You know who, who can do a good uh, a political run? Someone who's full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, I mean, if you're going to vote, you want to vote for people who are least on the right side of God. Huh? Those who can vote. I said everything I preached all this time, and and I'm, I'm normally I'm, I'm more excited, but I I, I want to help somebody, so I'm speaking as slow and as soft as I can. You are frustrated with this whole thing that you've made it, and trust me, you made it. That's what we do. Feelings are not facts, That's right. and just because you feel like. Things aren't going the way you want them to go, and they're whoever or whatever problem or their fault or my fault. Maybe you think it's my fault. I'll just ask you to forgive me right now. Now it's back on you. Amen. Tag, you're it. Huh? How about that? In this moment, and I didn't get to share everything I wanted to, and I'm sorry, but there is an apocalypse coming. But the reason why we know anything about it is because John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. There is great revelation on what you need to do with your life, who needs to be in your life, the ministry you really have, not the one you tell yourself that you have. Oh, help me. There's real revelation in your life. There's things that are going to happen that, that are coming your way. And without the spiritual revelation that you need of not only who Jesus is, but who you are. You're going to fall head first into something because you have feelings that are not facts. Every head bowed and every eye closed right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, I preach the word you gave me, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. Lord, right now we open our hearts to you, Jesus. Lord, there is a great commission, Lord. There's a great work. The field is right. We understand these things. Lord, we're, we're frustrated, though, sometimes with, with what are going on in our lives. We don't understand why people are sick. We don't understand why things are going on in our lives. We don't understand why we're struggling right now, Lord. But I ask you, in our state, Lord, forgive us. Lord, right now, forgive us, Lord, of what we made it, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, what we've turned this thing into, Lord. And bring us back, Lord, to being true worshipers where we can actually worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, give us spiritual revelation today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. I don't normally end the service like that. They're going to go ahead and cut the lights down. I'm not asking anybody to come down here. We're not going to shake you. We're not going to push you. I really feel like that this is a turning point for more than, more than a few people. That you have had enough religion. You've had enough Christian life church. There are some people out there right now that are in your life, and the reason they don't know about how good it is here on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights is because you haven't opened your mouth because you're struggling with your own identity. And Jesus Christ says that there is a revelation if you'll just get in the Spirit. If you'll just ask for His help today. If you just say, you know what, God, I know that I got gifts, but yet they're not operating. You know where them gifts come from? The Spirit. You know how you get them gifts? The Spirit. You know what goes with them gifts? The fruit of the Spirit. How are we going to operate in an end time? How are you going to operate in an end time outpouring without end time spiritual revelation? Amen. How are we going to be the church that reaches Mauriceville? Pastor has already stepped forward on faith and spiritual revelation to buy property that, that we need to fix, that we need to do. There, 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 there's these going on. Are we spiritual revelatory? Are we understanding the call that God has given us today? Personally and collectively. Amen. Do we have the revelation? And if you don't have the revelation, please find yourself a place to pray. Please don't leave here without, you can go ahead and start the music. Don't leave here without touching God for your life. God wants to speak to you. I'm not hollering. We're not excited. I'm not asking nobody to run the aisles and jump. What I'm asking you to do today is put your hand in the hand of the man 
who actually stilled the waters. Put your hand in Christ today who said that I'll take care of you. I'd never leave you nor forsake you. If you feel like God has more for you today, you need to touch God before you leave and say, God, give me spiritual revelation of where I am right now and where I need to be.